What's up, Shmodan fans? Frank here, and what you're listening to is a special preview episode of the Shmodan Rundown. And what this is exactly is, it's a it's a series of of interviews I was fortunate enough to have with several of the competitors before the matches of the third live event that took place at the El Portal Theater on September 8th. I spoke with uh, Winston Marshall and Mara Kanapik, two of the people that were, go- that were going to be competing that night. I also spoke with plenty of other competitors and got their thoughts on the matches and, and uh, plenty of other things. As you may be able to tell by the runtime here, it's a decent chunk of time and instead of inserting these clips... In this week's episode, it just made more sense to release this separately, especially because um, all these interviews took place before the matches even happened. Now, there's quite a bit of background noise, as you will hear, and that's because I was uh, fortunate enough to go behind stage in the green room where everyone was uh, mingling and having a good time. So it might be hard to hear things in a few spots, I apologize, but it was a really fun atmosphere, and it was a great time all around. Um, What you're about to hear now is a series of interviews played back-to-back as I wandered through the green room, so please enjoy. All right, we're here with uh, Winston Marshall. What's good? What's your team name now? Wait, I know this. Um, <laughs> I think you should know this. What's that name, by the way? Thank you, thank you. No, no, yeah. That's, that's Chance. It. Winston. That's me, Good to meet you, brother. Good. Hell yeah. Chance is crashing the interview? Okay. Yeah, what's up, Chance? Come on in. Come in the interview, brother. It's all good. Of course, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what's your team name? Wait, I know this. Wait, I know this? No, no, for real. That's, that's, that's it. That's the team name. Wait, okay. I know this. Yeah. I love it. It's great. It's great. <laughs> and now, live event. You've only been competing in the Showdown just this year. Yeah. Now you're in a live event yeah. uh, with Stacey Howard, someone who's yeah. been in the league for a little while now. Uh, how do you approach something like this as opposed to a studio setting where you normally uh, film you know, these matches? You know what's funny? I'm very curious to see how uh, my opponents are one way or the other. I don't know a lot of their history like outside of the showdown and whatnot uh i'm a stand-up comedian i've been doing theater since i was a kid so i actually feel like i might thrive off of this and maybe do a little better than just in the studio just because like i don't know playing playing with the crowd can like really give you what you need sometimes so i'm feeling like i i feel good about it i really do you're going up against two titans of the league people who've been champions and dan merrill and john roca uh does that play any sort of intimidation into going out there or is just you got to play your game to be honest with you i'm not gonna lie that i was nervous for a minute until i watched the u.s open today and even though there was some controversy about what happened oh shit what up Eric hey world's finest, world's finest the reunited. Yeah, yeah. um oh, good. but <laughs> but long story short uh i don't for anybody that watched the u.s open you know uh naomi osaka beat serena williams the goat today rising up and comer and did something that a lot of people thought she couldn't do I feel the exact if Naomi could come in here and beat Serena what's to stop me and Stacey from being, that beating and the founding fathers hell yeah founding fathers how do you like that name I mean I don't blame them for the name if, if anything it just reminds me of the Patriots and I hate the Patriots both in the slowdown and in football so you know they're just fueling rage for me it's good I like it all right, well, uh, good luck out there. Thank you. Put on a good show. I'm sure Thank you will. You. And uh, thanks a lot. No problem. Thank you very much. Talking to William Bibiani, the champion, the singles champion. Are you recording right now? I am. I'm eating cookies. Oh. I made these for Guy, but he's not here yet, so I'm going to eat them. Your tweets recently have involved a lot of cookie references, Mm -hmm. and here you are eating cookies. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, I made these for Guy. Yeah. He's not here. He's not here. So um, I'm eating them. And if Guy was lucky enough (laughs) to get the title shot, I may have some cookies for him. When the time comes, <laughs> okay. defeat cookies. Mm. Um, that's, that's just how the cookie crumbles. It is. It is. Yeah. I, I was just like kind of messing around. Turns out that really gets under his skin. That's that's his weakness. Making wow. being nice to him and making him things. Interesting. Yeah, odd weakness there, guy. But I will exploit it. <laughs> so you're here now at the live event. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think makes a live event special as opposed to a studio uh, production? Well, there's a bunch of reasons. First off, there's a crowd in the studio. The crowd is like 80 jillion times bigger sure. here. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me. I went in the entertainment industry because I was bad at math. I think you're close, yeah. But um, 
you know, that room, that big room of people who are here to see you and who are, you know, got that intensity and waiting to see who's going to win that match, that pumps some people up and it freaks some people out. So that's going to make a very different experience for the competitors. On the side of the producers, your, your Christians, your Marks, everyone who's, anyone who's going to be announcing today, it's dangerous because, you know, in the studio, the Collider Studio, if something really bad messes up, we can, we can stop. We can fix it. Here, you know, if a light falls, we kind of have to keep going, you know? Not that that's happened a lot at the Collider Studio. I'm not saying that there's some sort of phantom of the schmodown, but maybe there is. Anyway... Yeah, so here, a lot's on the line. A lot of people are watching in person, not just eventually when it gets released online. In person, people are going to be thrilled if you win and mad if you lose. And that goes just as well for everyone who's just hosting it. You know, they're going to be thrilled if it goes well, and if it goes bad, uh-oh, so you have to be extra super prepared. So even just back here, we're having fun right now, but everyone who's actually involved in putting on the show today, they know it's a little bit more intense. And they're taking it really, really, really seriously. For me, the live event is almost the purest form of the Schmodown because it is just actually putting on a show and showing a whole lot of people in person, live, just how much you know about movies. Now, Jason Inman, he's defending his belt live in front of an audience, not in a studio setting. Uh, would you ever defend your belt in a live setting? Oh my god, yes. You have yeah. no idea how many intros I've come up with <laughs> that would be specifically yeah. Yeah. for a live audience that w w wouldn't even work in a studio just because the setting is so different. I have so many ideas. I would kill for this. I'm jealous of Jason Inman and Mara Kanopic and Stacy and John, they all get to do this live thing, and I, so hopefully someday I will be able to make my live showdown debut because boy, do I have plans. He's got plans, folks. All right, babe, thanks, thanks for your time. No worries. And then we'll see, I'll see you later. Yeah. Are we here with Rachel Cushing, team champion, Shire Wolves? Uh, she, you're here tonight for the live event. Uh, Inner Geekdom, let's start there because you were in the tournament for the, the you know, the Inner Geekdom belt, and it unfortunately didn't go your way, but Mark Anopic, who you lost in the tournaments now facing Inman for the title. Uh, how do you see this match going for Jason and Mara in a live setting? I think this is going to be Jason's toughest test. I think if he pulls this out, then he proves he's the best intergeekdom player that's ever been. I think he surges past his uh, surges past Hector in that uh, vein. Um, I could, I think the intergeekdom league is harder than it was when it first started. Um, but Mara is clearly a force to be reckoned with. I know firsthand, as does Mike, and as does a bunch of other players. Um, I think this comes down to not knowledge because I think they're both have been studying and they know a ton. I think it's going to come down to the lights and, you know, putting the pressure of playing in front of 300 people aside and, and getting to those answers. So this really, honestly, truly, I'm not just copping out. This could be either one of their games. Yeah, and I think, I think a lot of people would agree that it's, it's tough to call. At least for me, it's been tough to call. I'm not really sure. Jason has crazy high stats. Mara yeah. hasn't been anything blown out of the water, but nonetheless, she has four wins. Yep. And uh, I'm just curious. Um, you know, you say it's not so much maybe about knowledge, but when you, can, when you compete at this high of a level and you, you and your knowledge is so vast. Is it more about strategy as well as like giving you the upper hand over a player? Definitely. I mean, I have no doubt that they've been studying each other as much as they've been studying movies and knowing, you know, uh, I mean, I, I can only speak from experience, but when Clark and I played in our title match, we said, okay, if we're going into round two, leading by a certain number of points, that will influence whether we want to spin first or second. And then that also informed our betting round. So each round, you take stock of where you are, where you thought you would be, and then you plan accordingly for the next one. So my guess is they're certainly doing that, keeping in mind uh, what each of them are good at. And honestly, it comes down to the wheel. You know, and when they come out of round two, it, it, it could be one of them gets a strength, one of them gets a weakness. It could be that they both get weaknesses, both get strengths, both do just okay. And if it's neck and neck, and then every little point, every buzzer yeah. counts, yeah. you know? So I think that you'll see the strategy kick in after the how many points one is leading after the first round and then definitely after the second round. All right, and lastly, the team match, Merle and uh, Roca and then Winston and Stacy. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I know Winston and Stacey are right there, but who, 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 do you, who do you think might pull this one out? Here's the thing. I think Dan, you know, hit a stumbling block and his, you know, coming back into the league. So I, But I think that that has made him hungrier. We all know that Roca is, like, the hungriest player in the league. So those two are definitely taking this seriously and are gunning for the win. But I have to say, like, my favorite thing about the showdown is that it is an any given Sunday. And honestly, I always used to prefer playing as the underdog because when you're the underdog, as everybody says Stacy and Winston is in this case, you've got no pressure on you at all. So, you know, there, there, there's none of that. You're probably not going to have the mind blocks. You're not going to have the, like, oh, my God, I know this. I can't get to it. They're going to have fun. And when you're fun, you're relaxed. You get to the answers easier. And any given Sunday, they get a good wheel spin, and the boys don't, and we got a game. So that's the beauty of the Schmodown. So even though they're underdogs, it could certainly go Stacey and Winston's way. Personally, I hope for a good match one way or the other, um, and uh, may the best team win. That's about the answer I was looking for. I was going to get, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've seen a couple people uh, fall in. All right, so we have a uh, former champion, champion of multiple leagues. That's right, former uh, dual champion. Former dual champion. That's that's, okay, that's how you want. All right. Uh, Sam Levine, uh, you're here at the Lab event. You were at the previous one. I, you were I the was first at the first one. First, one. first one. I was out of town for the second one. one. Uh, what is it about a live event that uh, just kind of ups the uh, intensity ups, of the Schmodown? Ups the ante. Well, for starters, you have a real crowd. Like when we do it in studio, uh, sometimes there's two people. Uh, watching from our little audience. Yeah. Sometimes it's packed, and that means 20 people maximum. I mean, so, uh, and those are all people who know how the sausage is made, so to speak. So, you know, it's not as fun for them to sit and watch and try to get invested. Tonight, it's great because the live event opens it up to the real fans who only know the show as it streams on YouTube. So, uh, for them to get to see it and get to experience the the real life, um, real time energy of a match, I think, is everything. Uh, we got we got two pretty big uh, matches happening tonight. Yep. Jason Inman going yep. up against Mark and He's the first player to defend a title yep. in a live event. Yep. Uh, it's a five rounder. Yeah. How do you, how do you think a live event uh, or this just the setting in general? Uh, makes things different for for two players going in a five round match. Um, I mean, it's certainly going to add to the stress for me. With the the live element for me, I think the hardest round will be the speed round. So it's really going to be on Christian and Mark to make sure that they wait until the crowd is absolutely silent before asking the next question. Because with the speed round, you know, there's always going to be a critical word that gets asked as part of the question that that's the word where you know where the question is leading and so if there's any noise from the crowd for me that would be so annoying yeah, yeah. if I couldn't possibly if I somehow couldn't hear the key, key word because of the crowd noise and that cost me a point so I think both competitors need to be very aware of that, but more so Christian and Mark need to be, and I think they are. Uh, are you leaning either way and who could, who could win this inner geekdom? Oh, it's uh, anyone's game. Yeah. Mara is an absolute beast. Uh, to, it, it's, it's not just luck for her to have, have wound up uh, as far into this as she has. She, she knows her stuff inside and out. Um, and the absolute same for uh, Jason Inman. I mean, he, he is... He is a magnificent champion. He knows that world better than anyone else. And so um, I'm, I would actually in real life give the slight edge to uh, Jason if it were an Iron Man. Yeah. But it is not an Iron Man. <laughs> okay. So there is the luck factor. Yeah. There is the, um, you know, the, 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 the chance that they will just find a couple of questions that are just outside of his purview and just enough questions that are inside hers. So it really could go either way. That's going to be quite a match. And then we have the team match. Talking about Dan Merle and John Roca, two of the most um, decorated players Absolutely. Uh, in this league. They go up against uh, Winston Marshall, someone pretty new to the league, but uh -huh. Stacey Howard, uh, his teammate, who's been in the league for a couple years. Yep. Uh, how, do you, how do you see this match uh, going down? Is, is, this, is it, I think, the theme we're seeing here, which any showdown match is, yeah. uh, 
any any team, any player can win on any given spin, any given day. I have said that since day one. Any any given Sunday, you don't know what's going to happen. So, uh, you know, I mean, you see it online and people talk about it. Oh, it's going to be such a slam dunk. There's no such thing. Ever since the Guy Merle match, that should be the match we always refer to as there are no sure things in the Schmodown. So... Um, with a powerhouse team on paper, yes. like Merlin Roca, you never know. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Winston or Stacy. They are both great players in their own right. I mean, there are, you know, more... I think they have a bigger knowledge of some deeper cut categories that they maybe haven't been able to really exhibit in matches yet. And I'm praying that they can because... Not just, you know, they'll need it to stay competitive, but I would love to watch a team or two players, however you want to put it, really get a chance to shine, regardless of the outcome of the match. I want them to show off their movie knowledge cred because they both have it. And uh, obviously, you know, Dan and, 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 and John, you know, they've both been playing the game for a very long time. Everybody knows what they're capable of, so uh, it, it's, it's going to be a fun match to watch because... Uh, like I said, there's no sure things, and uh, we always like surprises. And even if there's no surprise, it's still going to be fun, and I think it's going to be a lot more competitive than people think. Now, uh, when, when you stepped away from the game, you mentioned, uh, I mean, you know, you're, you're a busy guy. You, you act, and you mm -hmm. have that kind of career going on. Uh, but you also mentioned that uh, you would like to help behind the scenes yes. with the game. Oh, yes. Um, have you been able to get involved with that? A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Christian uh, protects the uh, question list. Um, like it's a child, yeah. Like uh, so, it, it's hard to wrestle it away from him. But I've been able to a few times, and uh, hello, hello. Um, I've been able to get it away from him a few times, and uh, I. Uh, uh, Chris is a magnificent question writer, but he is essentially a one-man army, yeah. and his army needs a little reinforcements. Sure. Uh, so, questions like. For example, the one I got uh, in the uh, Patriots Above the Line 2, the DiCaprio question, where the answer was ultimately Johnny Depp, but yeah. I said, uh, uh, what's eating Gilbert Grape? Um, I know the Patriots fans love to get on me for that one, but anyone who's not biased would absolutely look at that question and go, that thing took three left turns and then a detour into a different sure. state. Yeah, yeah. That was such a poorly worded question because what Chris was trying to do was take a relatively easy question and through uh, language manipulation somehow make it harder. And there are ways to do that for sure, but that was not one of them. Uh, so I'm just looking to look at questions and make sure ones like that can be as hard as Christian and 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 Chris want without being impossible to hear and answer because again the competitors never get to see the questions written on a screen like the people playing at home do and I cannot tell you how big a difference that makes when you're just listening to the question read out loud it's it is a very different experience well Sam I want to thank you uh, for taking the time your insight is always welcome and uh, oh, thanks, uh, thanks a lot for uh, taking the time man. my pleasure Frank all right thanks good to see you we're here with Bree and Chandler and uh, you were Recently in the team championship match, sick in the head. Yes. Um, I'm just curious about your thoughts on how that match went. How do you think both you and Brian played in that match? Um, how I think both Brian and I played in that match. Um, you know, I feel like I wasn't disappointed with my performance or his performance at all. Uh, I just feel like, you know, when when someone is just on, they're on. Yeah. And, like, you can't stop a, you know, freight train. Yeah. So I just felt like there's no stopping someone on that trajectory. And it was made for them to win. It wasn't It wasn't our day. And that's okay. And I think that together, for our first match together, we played relatively well, yeah. uh, in my own opinion. I don't know what other people would say if they'd be like, oh, they sucked. Um, but I don't think that's true. I think that we played a good game. And, and looking back, certain things, like there was a challenge that happened. And I feel like 
when the challenge happened, we all forgot what the question was asking. Mm. And so we didn't think about exactly the very specifics of the question. And had that, had we like been thinking more about the question, I don't think that challenge would have been upheld. Gotcha. And maybe we would have got to the third round. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. I don't think, I don't think the outcome would have changed, okay. is my point on that. Um, now, in your, I guess, challenge to the Shirewolves, mm -hmm. when you cashed in your free-for-all um, title shot, yes. you mentioned that uh, um, no matter what, a woman was going to hold the belt one way yes. or the other. Uh, what does that mean to you as a woman in the league that we finally have women champions? To me, um, I think it means a lot because I just sense the inception of the Schmodown itself. It's always had a male title holder, and we're five seasons in. And I just feel like, you know what, I'm really excited to be part of this moment and to be able to have this happen, even if it doesn't mean that it's me holding the belt. I just was thinking, it's time for a woman to hold the belt. And I'm glad that it's two women, and I'm glad that they are incredible players. And I can't wait to see what happens at the end of Anarchy. I think I, I don't know. It depends on how this all works. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh... I mean, we could have another above the line situation where the, there's a team that just dominates the entire time, and then and and who knows what will happen at the end. But they're so strong; they're basically the next Patriots in, in my mind. Um, you talk about above the line situation, a new team coming into a tournament tonight is the official start of the Team Anarchy Tournament with yes. uh, Dan Merle and John Roca going against Winston Marshall and Stacey Howard, who you knew yes. very well. Um, this match, um, a lot of people see it as a lopsided... As a squash uh, match. It's a squash match, right. Mm -hmm. um, but I think as, as I've talked to other players and, um, and other people or other players have put out their thoughts, it really could go either way. What is it about um, lopsided matches that just make it not lopsided but because of the way the format of the Schmodown is? Um, I think what makes it not lopsided is a lot of luck. Yeah. Because the second round is all about luck. Now, whether people believe that to be true or not, that wheel is going to either like catapult you to maybe winning or it's going to crush you. And so it all depends on what your pre-method pre of studying for a match is. Like me personally, I look at who I'm going up against and I look at what their biggest strength is and what they will most likely be asking for on the wheel and I study that. And other people will maybe take a new category and I'll study this whole category so that way I'm ready for that category and I'll put that on the wheel. But I do it for more of a defense rather than a, um, offensive. Okay. Like, I like to play defense, yeah. you know, I don't need to be the quarterback. <laughs> okay. so. um, now with Intergeekdom match night, Jason Inman, Mark and Abed Mara has a shot at being another female yes. championship. Wouldn't that be amazing? If that it would was be very amazing. Um, how difficult do you think uh, this matchup is going to be between these two players? Do you think it's going to be a close yeah. match? Um, I think it could. It, you know, the difference is we haven't seen Jason in a while. So yeah. it's kind of, there's been some time. I know that he's had, you know, some big opportunities in his working life, too. So who knows, like, what kind of focus he's had to prepare for this. Um, but when you are 3-0 and coming into something and you just feel like you're kind of... Is it 4-0? Yeah. I'm sorry about that. When you're 4-0 and coming into something, you're just kind of, like, on a roll. I'm, I'm on this path. And that kind of gives you that momentum of I need if I want to go five and zero, oh, then I need to like really put in the time to study anything that I am missing at this point. All right, and now you uh, run the Patreon, help run the Patreon. Is there anything Patreon related that that you want to um, put out there? That maybe something that's coming up or things to look forward to? Any other exhibition mm -hmm. matches that something that's okay. recently started? Um, have any anything you want to put out there? Uh, we have yeah. Mark and Christian going up against each other for this month's Patreon match. If you support at the ten dollar level or above, you will get that this month uh, at the end of the month, probably the last week. If you support at any level, if you give a dollar, you're gonna get that two weeks after those ten dollar patrons. So that will come the following month if we put it out that last week of the of this month. So we have that coming up, which is a big deal. It's gonna be a five five round match. Um, 
I think maybe Sam Levine's calling it. I don't oh, know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, might that? I have no idea. But that that was that was a rumor. And then um, as far as other things, it's just gosh. I mean, we definitely adding those exhibition matches has been a lot of fun. We've talked. I've, I've talked to various people. You know, I've heard like, oh, I want an all Die Hard yeah. match. I'm like, I want an all John Hughes match. I think sure. that would be fun. We could all dress in eighties. Like, <laughs> yeah. I there's a lot of a lot of things that you can do with it, and I think it can be a lot of fun. And I'm I'm happy that that's something that we've added. We also have the thirty for thirty that's, that's on right. John Roca that's gonna be coming out. I don't have a definitive like when that will come out, but it will happen is what I can say. Um, would you go as far as to say maybe hopefully by the end of the year or? Oh, I can't. I can't. You can't even say. I can't, can't even, even say. say okay. That, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to say that, yeah, yeah. but I can't say that. Okay. Well. Uh, also, we didn't put a date on it. So, oh, that's true. So that's helpful. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Don't <laughs> put it down. Yeah. It will happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Brian. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So uh, we're here with uh, one half of the Wild Berries, Elliot Dewberry. Uh, right off the bat, I gotta know, what is it like being a Wild Berry? Uh, it's pretty fucking wild, uh, first of all, which is self-evident. Um, yeah, it's about having, you know, having fun, staying positive, getting a little sauced, and having uh, a moderate to acceptable level of movie knowledge. Uh, just enough to get your friends who happen to run a movie trivia contest to continue <laughs> inviting you there. That's pretty much it. Now, uh, you're not competing tonight, but... Uh, thank God. Thank God. I mean, you did perform in the first live event. We did. We were the highlight of the first live event. And every, believe me, everyone's saying so. Uh, <laughs> oh, they are. I'm, I'm serious. They are. They are. We, we, yes, we took home a much-needed victory at the first ever live event, uh, which, you know, obviously the real rejects were the opponents all around and good dudes. So no bad blood there, but yeah, it's nice to be back here uh, as both a spectator and as a uh, sort of warm-up act. Yeah, I mean, you and Josh have such a, a theatric presence, being the Wildberries. We saw it in the live event first off, and everyone praised you guys, rightly so. And then you were asked to come here uh, for this event, even though you're not playing, but I guess put on somewhat some sort of a show for the, for the fans out there? Well, if you think of the Schmodown as a war, and I do, <laughs> A huge part of modern warfare is uh, capturing the hearts and minds of the locals and the people present. And I, I believe the Wildberry's greatest strength is hearts and minds. So it makes sense that they would uh, send us out into the audience tonight to get people ready for uh, one hell of a show in which they've stood in line for hours for some of them and, and paid good money to see uh, people they watch on the internet in the same room as them. With, uh, with a speech like that, I think you should run for office. Have you ever considered it? Um, well, yeah, it would be cool to run for office. I feel like uh, within about 30 seconds of announcing my candidacy, someone would just look at my Twitter account, and then it'd be, all right, yeah, buddy, you got to go. That's fair. That's fair. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, that, that, that wouldn't be fun. Yeah. I'd rather just do things like this, where I get to yell into a microphone and lose my voice and uh, go home and wake up with a bit of a hangover the next day and not have to worry about running a local government and uh, picking budgets and stuff like that. Um, with the Team Anarchy tournament, you're the only team not broken up by Anarchy. Is, does that mean the Wildberries are stronger than Anarchy, that they can overcome any any shenanigans, any corruption? Yeah. Are the Wildberries that strong? It is. I believe it was uh, Carl Sagan who said, friendship is stronger than knowledge. He actually didn't say that, but I, I feel like he it. might have said that. Sounds and like uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the bond of the Wildberries is uh, stronger than any, you know, arbitrary, bureaucratic, drawing names out of a hat system that they've put in place here. Um, and and thank God, because uh, if the Wildberries had been broken up somehow during the selection process, uh, I, I feel like the league would have been severely hurt. I feel like there would have been a big dip in uh, viewership and engagement, <laughs> and so so glad it worked out, because I, I can't imagine the consequences <laughs> of breaking up the Wild Berries. Now, I mean, just those t-shirt sales would plummet, I would think, or maybe in spite. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, like, obviously the Collider is an independent company now. They're having to rely on uh, Patreon donations. It's a, it's, a tight, it's a tight ship they're running here, but it's... Uh, you know, they gotta 
they got to keep their eye on those numbers. And if the Wildberry shirts, of which there are many, over on tpublic.com, if the Wildberry shirt selection were to uh, suddenly become obsolete through the breakup of the Wildberries, I, I just can't see this entire tournament existing in the near future. <laughs> All right, Elliot, thanks a lot for, for your time. And, Thank you. I uh, hope uh, you put on a good show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're here with uh, Mara Kanopic. She's facing Jason Inman for the Inner Geekdom belt tonight. Uh, Mara, how are you feeling going up against Jason Inman in a live event? Not a studio, but a live event. Well, I love any excuse for people to pay to have to listen to me talk, and they don't have a choice, so it's going to be awesome. I, I have all of the facts, all of the figures, many opinions, and stretchy pants that don't even need a belt. So if I don't win, I won't be that disappointed. Uh, what would it mean? I mean, we just had women champions for the first time uh, with uh, Clark Wolf and Rachel Cushing. Now, you have a shot at it at, at a belt. But what would it mean for you to, first of all, walk into the league so as a rookie and go five straight matches and win a belt? And on top of that, being a woman in an inner geekdom league, which is, let's face it, is very male-dominated in geek culture. What would it mean to have this kind of belt? Well, I think, you know, the first woman to have a singles belt is uh, an accomplishment all its own, and I'm so glad that Rachel and Clark paved the way for people to become really accepting and welcoming of it. And uh, I think it would be really meaningful to me just because I think it would challenge newcomers and really inspire them that they can do something to be, if I win, a 5-0 and undefeated belt holder that has never happened before. Not even Dan Merle was 5-0 and when he got his first belt. So... That's true. I think you can fact check that. <laughs> so, you know, I can uh, set a record that I, I aspire to see someone beat. I want someone to come and be even better than I was. Since you've had a, a bit of a time, some time off since your last match, um, has there been anything you've been doing to prepare for a five-round match? I mean, there's buzzers involved and a betting round. Have you thought about how you might approach those scenarios? Well, uh, I did have the good fortune of having my match with Mike be five rounds, so at least it's not my first one. Um, I'm so glad that I have almost completely recovered from my car accident, so I'm no longer in unbelievable physical agony, uh, bordering on physically vomiting during a match because that's how uncomfortable I was in my last two matches. So it's just good to feel like the only thing I have to worry about is trivia. I don't have to worry about getting in and out of a chair, spinning a wheel. Um, I'm just going to take it question by question and just do the best job I can. And as long as I'm proud of it, win or lose, I'm going to be happy about it. All right, well, Mara, good luck tonight. Thank you for your time and good luck. Thank you. Thanks. All right, I hope you enjoyed what everyone had to say. I want to thank Winston Marshall, William Bibiani, Rachel Cushing, Sam Levine, Brianne Chandler, Elliot Dewberry, and Mara Kanopic for taking the time to speak with me. And make sure to tune in later this week on Saturday where we will be sure to break down both matches from the live event. And we'll see you then.